why you this is why you get a step through bike. <laughs> oh, you're nuts. Gosh. It's a long drive from Anza Borrego to just south of Sedona. About, I think it took us about seven hours. But uh, we are here. It's getting colder. And I'm going to make some quick soup. Just some uh, tomato soup from Costco. If, you if you're a Costco member, you probably had it. And uh, I like to throw in a few things to make it better. So I throw in some spinach and I throw in some kidney beans and then I'll try to find up some, find some crackers to go with it. I got the induction cooktop going here. I really like that. It cooks things so much faster. And when you have hookups like we do here, it's great. There are tons of hikes in Sedona that I would love to do. All of them are super popular and heavily trafficked, but we may have lucked out today. We got to the trailhead and we're on the Broken Arrow trailhead. We got here at 8 a.m., but the weather is not looking so good, which is probably keeping people away. And we brought our e-bikes because this is also a very popular four-wheel drive uh, track. It's only four miles long but I downloaded an article from Earth Trekkers and I'll link it in the description box if you're interested. And we are gonna do it on our e-bikes, but there are also some offshoots from the, the road that will take you on short hikes to see things. So we're gonna give this a try. It's not supposed to start raining until um, probably this afternoon sometime, so we should be good. One other thing I wanna say about Sedona, they are not e-bike friendly. You're not allowed to ride your e-bikes on the mountain bike trails. You're only allowed on Jeep trails. So uh, there are, apparently though, there is another Earth Trekker article that I will also link below that talks about six trails or six four-wheel drive trails. Um, this one is probably the most difficult or challenging, but I think on our e-bikes, I think we'll be okay. You'll find out. Um, but the others might be better for um, some people. Now, one more thing about this parking lot. This parking lot only holds about 30 cars and it's at the end of a neighborhood and there's no parking in the neighborhood. So uh, that's one thing to be aware of. Getting into the dirt parking lot could be a problem if you don't have high ground clearance or at least high enough. We have eight, about eight and a half inches on our van. Um, so you might want to walk it before you dr attempt to drive it in a, a van or something that doesn't have the ground clearance. And around it to the right. <laughs> Going for it. <laughs> Slippery. Gotta stop for the views. Pretty amazing. Apparently, there's a bat cave right here. Oh. Wow. That's a sinkhole, John.
We're going to park our bikes and go up to Submarine Rock. That's a nice view. Okay, hold on. Hold the bus. Feet out of the stirrups and uh, go for it. John crashed, but he didn't wait for me to catch him. <laughs> yeah, you need to go up the side. Pretty amazing. That's mushroom rock, I think. Yeah, that's mushroom rock. Don't go fast. Get it down. <laughs> of red rock on ya, some souvenirs. having our snacks and being entertained by these pink jeep tours that take these people down this rock multiple times. This is the third time for this guy. The last guy only did it twice. Are you having fun? Oh yeah. Would you recommend other people do this? Oh yeah. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer. Oh, I would urge extreme caution. <laughs> called the stairs. Whoa, you take that break, I'll take this one. Okay. And we will walk it down really slowly.
Jeez. <laughs> Scare the crap out of me, dude. Well, I've done it before. It's just I need a three inch lift kit. Oh, you have? Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just every time you come, it's a little different. He says it's worse he's ever seen it. <laughs> it's that first drop off. Yeah. I was fine because I kept my tire on that, that rock to the, uh -huh. the big rock to the yeah. right. GoPro does not do it justice. That is so steep and slippery. So, do not come down the stairs. Do not do that. Under any circumstances, I don't want to be responsible. Just turn around and go back the other way. We're not out of the woods yet because there's another little spot right here. Looks pretty steep. That's not as bad. It's going to be. Actually, I can. I could actually ride that. Okay. Yeah, I can ride that. Okay. Whoa! Oh, is he right on it? Grind in there. Oh yeah. Here's Debbie getting the hell out of a way of. We made it with all of our limbs. Let me check. <laughs> a little dirty though. Not the, none the worse for the wear. Oh, there's dusty shoes. I'm gonna let you put those in the back. Well, the, looks like the rain is heading our way, so we're gonna we're gonna go into town and make some lunch and maybe do a little Christmas shopping. Right, John? <laughs> Yeah. What, can I, what can I get you for Christmas? <laughs> I'm going to buy myself something for Christmas. <laughs> By the way, these pants were great. They protected me when I fell because they have the little extra protection and you can see all the dirt. And they cut the wind because it got a little chilly. So that just worked out great. And look what I found on the trail. It was on the stairs. Somebody lost one of these suckers. What are these called, John? The recovery. Oh, oh, it's a recovery um, hook. hook, whatever. Ha. sunrise but looks like we're gonna have clear skies today this morning we're actually going back to Sedona kind of meet up with a friend I haven't seen in years and we're gonna have breakfast and then we'll try to find a hike since I see some Sun outside tonight it's supposed to get down to 23 degrees and uh, there's always a lot of discussion about winterizing at this time of year and all this all the articles I see online say that you don't need to worry about it if it's not going to be below freezing for like 24 hours and uh, since it's just a really a few hours before the temperature will go up again tomorrow we're not going to worry about it but we do have uh, we have two heaters two electric heaters and we have the electric blanket that we'll be using tonight we were toasty warm last night it was um, got down to about 40 and I'm hoping sometime today we'll actually get to explore this park. It's called Dead Horse Ranch State Park. It gets five stars and I haven't seen any of it because we've pretty much been leaving before it gets light out and coming back too late. Or yesterday it was raining. So maybe today we'll actually get to it after we do some laundry and, uh, and get a few groceries before we head out. But one thing I will do tonight is make sure I put the Truma water heater on the snowflake. Snow in the mountains. 
Laundry done, we are off to Tuzi Goot. I thought I'd share a laundry tip that I'm gonna implement, I should have a long time ago. Get yourself one of those lingerie bags that you put lingerie in and then put it in the washer and the dryer, that sort of thing. Because those commercial dryers, I, I guess it's the holes in the dryer that grab things. And, or actually, I lost a jacket zipper because of the washing machine. This time I lost a hook on my Dirty Girl Gators. And so this hook on the other one got inside, I don't know how it happened, it got inside the hole. I could not get it out for the life of me. John went out and got some pliers. I still couldn't get it out. I had to completely tweak it. Oops, I had to completely tweak the hook. Now it's got sharp spots on it, so I'm gonna have to find a new hook and sew it on because uh, another item I could have saved, spared myself if I had just gotten a laundry bag. A laundry bag? A laundry bag laundry for lingerie. Laundry. This is Old Town Cottonwood, which is very close to well, our campground, but also to the Tuzigoot National Monument. There's a cute spot. Turn right on the Tuzigoot Tuzi Road. Open 8 to 445. Tuzigoot is the name given to the ruins of a Pueblo village in the Verde Valley, built by the Sanagua people a thousand years ago. The site was home to several hundred people occupying as many as 110 rooms and abandoned in the early 1400s. It was excavated between 1933 and 1935 and designated a national monument in 1939. The visitor center displays some of the 22,000 artifacts. I was particularly intrigued with the display of matates and manos with their deep troughs. Over 120 have been found at the site. The land surrounding the ruins was ideal for farming with the temperate climate and plentiful water. The ruins are now surrounded by the tailing ponds of the United Verde Copper Mine of Jerome and were recently revegetated. Tailings were capped in 2006. There is a trail that connects Dead Horse Ranch Campground with the monument, but e-bikes are not allowed. Short Clarkdale is empty. <laughs> Plans keep changing. Now we've stopped at the historic railroad. Clarkdale, and then we're going to go to an art museum up the road we just spotted. Hey, this is a long train. They're going to have a lot of people on this thing tonight. They have a train at 5.30 and 7. And there's a museum. Let's go check it out. Ooh. That's a surprise. Cool. Jerome is named for New York lawyer Eugene Murray Jerome, oh. one of the original investors. Never laid, never laid eyes on his namesake, and his cousin was Ginny Jerome, mother of Sir Winston Churchill. Wow. 
So what are you making there? Bunch. Cheese and avocado in the bridge monkey. Here. Ooh. That's a nice job. And these are avocados from my tree. It's an art museum. It's the old, oh well, it was, used to be a high school. Now it's an art museum. Arizona Copper Art Museum. Copper is the oldest and perhaps most important metal in the world, and Arizona is the copper state. The Copper Art Museum in Clarkdale houses a collection of over 5,000 works of art and architecture spanning 5,000 years of human history. Oh my gosh. Wow. You can smell that smoke from outside. Borneo Pirate Gun. It is fitting that it is located just a few miles from Jerome, Arizona, the wickedest town in America, where over $800 million worth of copper was mined between 1876 and 1953. John told me a story today that I wanted to share with you because it's the funniest thing I've ever heard. The couple that pulled in right behind John, you can see their trailer, they were setting up and John overheard a conversation. The wife says to the husband, she's seen the D-O-G. And I looked at the husband and I said, your D-O-G can spell D-O-G? And she said, no, it's a C-A-T.